In this video, I'll be sharing my recent research topic on the conversion of food waste into bioplastic via microalgae. So what exactly is microalgae? Microalgae is a third generation feedstock, either in unicellular or multicellular. Microalgae has simple cell structure. Thus, minimum nutrients are required, such as light energy from the sun, which provide energy for photosynthesis and microbial growth, water, and carbon dioxide as energy source for cell development and direct carbon capture. Moreover, microalgae has great flexibility and adaptability to grow on waste resources and do not need any arable land. Microalgae also inhibits high protein, lipids, and carbohydrates accumulations. Furthermore, nitrogen and phosphorus are major nutrient sources for microalgae growth. Microalgae utilizes nitrogen to produce protein, enzymes, and chlorophyll. Phosphorus is consumed by microalgae to produce protein, lipids, and intermediate of carbohydrates. However, during the limitations of nitrogen and phosphorus, carbohydrate, lipids, and polyhydroxyaconites, also known as PHA, are accumulated. Why food waste? So, according to Grandview Research, the global food waste management market was estimated to be at 34 billion US dollar in the year 2019. It is expected to grow at an annual compound growth rate of 5.4% from the year 2020 up to year 2027. This growth pattern is attributed to the rising concerns over food waste globally. So, how do we exactly manage food waste? Food waste is not just a waste. Why? Because food waste contains valuable and potential organic fractions such as proteins, carbohydrates, lipids, nitrogen, and phosphorus. However, improper disposal can lead to unpleasant smell, flies, groundwater contamination, toxic gases such as carbon dioxide, and eutrophications in lakes. The convention methods to treat food waste are listed here, such as gasification, landfills, and incineration method. However, the recent technology for food waste water purification has implemented microalgae species due to environmental friendly efficiency in waste water treatment and easy Bio, easy operation in bioreactor. So why do we implement food wastewater? Food processing wastewater contains high biological oxygen and chemical oxygen demand, dissolved suspended solids, fats, oil, grease, nitrogen, and phosphorus. In addition to low concentration of toxic pollutants, which then indicate that there is a higher chance for microalgae cultivation to remove nutrients from food wastewater such as soybean, dairy, brewery, meat, and oil meal. In the meantime, it can produce value-added byproducts such as protein, polysaccharides, and lipids which are suitable for the production of bioplastics. So, in this table, the high nutrient removal rate can be seen from each food wastewater type, which indicates that microalgae has the potential to purify wastewater efficiently. Moving on to the comparison of bioplastics and petroleum-based plastics. Bioplastics can be fully biodegradable, environmental friendly, composted into soil, replace toxic plastics, and made from renewable resources. However, on the other hand, petroleum-based plastics are higher in production. However, non-renewable affected the global warming, produce carbon footprint, and also impact on the aquatic habitat and environment. So on this slide, uh, we're focusing on bioplastic production from microalgae biomass. So there are four methods to produce bioplastics as you can see from this table. First, starch and cellulose are extracted directly from biomass. Second, bioplastic can be produced from bio-based monomers such as polytic acid. Third, Bioplastic can be produced by natural or genetic modified organisms such as polyhydroxyburate and polyhydroxyalkanoids. Lastly, bioplastic can be made from blending of microalgae biomass with petroleum derived plastics and bioplastics. Moving on to the last slides, uh, this table shows the comparison between plastic blends and synthetic polymers. Tensile strength is a measure of strength of a material to resist tension. So as you can see in the top section of the table, the tensile strengths for various synthetic polymers. In the middle section, where a fully derived microalgae plastics such as cholera and 
spirulina shows significantly low tensile values. However, by blending microalgae biomass with synthetic polymers, which can be seen in this bottom section of the table, the results are close to similar compared to that of synthetic polymers, and thus, bioplastics can be seen as a potential replacement to conventional, bio, conventional plastics. That's all for my video. Thank you.